In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this customizable chain links with geometry nodes. So this is a product which I just recently released, so if you'd like to purchase the product, then I'll have the product links in the video description. And purchasing the product is a great way to help support this channel. So at the beginning of this video, I will show you how to use the product for everyone who's purchased it, and then after that, the rest of this video will be a tutorial showing you how to create the chain links yourself. So when you purchase the product, you will get a Blender file, and the Blender file will come with this curve object. And so you can go into edit mode of the curve, and then you can select the curve handles and move the curve handles around, and that is gonna move the chain links around. So the chain links geometry node setup is applied to the curve object. And then also in the Blender file, you will get a bunch of different types of chain links, and I'll show you how to add the different types of chain links to the geometry nodes. And then you'll also get these spheres here with a bunch of different metal materials so that you can change the material of the chains. So I'm just gonna select the chain links again, and of course you can go into edit mode and you can rotate the curve handles around, and you can scale them up and you can extrude them to move the chain around. But when you select the chain, you can click right over here on the modifier properties, and the customizable geometry node chain links will be right here. So there are many different customizable settings. You can change the size of the chain scale, and then you can also change the type of chain links. So if I just open up the outliner here and close all of these, you can see there's different collections, and these collections have different types of chains. And these are the types of chains right here which are included in the product. So if you want to change the chain links, let me just make this smaller, you can click here on the chain type, and then you can choose the different collections. So the first one here is a pretty classic one. It's just pretty basic. Then we have chains two, and that one is kind of some rotating ones. Then we also have chains three, and this one is just some big circles. And then also chains four. These ones are pretty simple, but they kind of have those little bumps there on the sides. And then chains five. This one is a pretty cool one. It's kind of like these hook shapes. And then chain six, these are some long ones again. They're kind of a donut shape, but these ones are kind of flat on the edges. Then we have chains seven, and these are similar, but they are more of an oval shape. And then we have chains eight, and these ones are the same oval shape, but they're rotated. And then we have chains nine, and these ones are some square shaped ones. And then we also have chains 10, and these ones are some diamond shaped ones. And then you can also go here and change the chain distance. So if you turn the chain distance up, then there's gonna be more distance in between all the chains, but how I've modeled the chains, all the chains are the same size, so you shouldn't have to change the chain distance. However, if you want to create your own chain objects and then make them bigger, then you can use that change distance. Then we also have the random rotation, so you can randomly rotate all of the chains around. However, if you turn this to zero, the chains shouldn't collide with each other, because you can see that each one is at a different rotation. But you could turn this up a little bit, like a 0.1, if you want to add a slight variation. And then we also have the rotation seed. So if you rotate the rotation really far up, maybe if I rotate this really big, you can see sometimes this will happen where the chains are overlapping. So you can just change the chain seed to fix that or just keep the random rotation at a very small number. Now, as well as that, you can also change the chain material, but the product will come with these different metal materials. So there are 10 different procedural metal materials, which will come with the product. So again, if you just select the chain links and go here to the geometry nodes, you can click here on the material to change change the chain material. So the default one here is this silver one, but then we also have rusty dark. So that is pretty cool for some really rusty ones. We also have rough silver, and then we also have rough dark, and we also have this plasticky one, and then we also have this old metal one. It looks kind of worn down, and we also have this light gold one, and we also have this just regular gold one, and also this copper colored one, and also this battered metal one as well. And then all of the procedural materials which are included in the product also have customizable values. So you can see for each one of these procedural metal materials, they are created as a node group, and so you can change many of the settings. So for this one, we have like the scale, and we have the noise scale. We also have the metallic value, and some noise settings, like the noise detail and roughness. And then you can also choose the different colors. You can also also change the roughness of the metal, and then you have some different bump strengths. So if you'd like to purchase the Geometry Nodes customizable chain links product, you can find the link to that in the description, and purchasing is a great way to help support me and this channel to help me keep on creating these free tutorials. So now in the rest of the video, I'll be showing you how to create this yourself. However, I won't be showing you how to create the procedural materials because I already have many procedural material tutorials on my YouTube channel, and also I'm not going to be showing you how to make all of the chain links, I'll just be creating the first chain links 
in this video. But if you'd like to learn how to create procedural metal materials, then definitely check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. I'll have the link to that in the description as well. All right, so here I am in a new scene in Blender and I'll just select everything and I'll just delete it with the X key. And I can now go to the add menu by pressing shift A and we're gonna make the first chain link. So let's go to mesh and I'm going to add a torus. And I'll press period on the numpad to zoom into the torus. And right after you add the torus, before you click away or move it around, you can click right down there, right behind me on the add torus settings. So click there to open it up. Now the torus is kind of high resolution right now. So I'm gonna make the major segments just half. So instead of 48, I'm just gonna use 24. And then I can close that. So I'll now press seven on the numpad for top view and I'll go into edit mode and I'll go into the wireframe view. I'm just gonna deselect everything and I can click and drag just to box select half of the torus. And I'll hit E to extrude the vertices out and I'll extrude them out on the X axis and I'll just make it kind of about that long. Then I can go back to object mode and I'll go back to solid view and I will use the object context menu to shade the object smooth. And then when modeling to the real life scale in Blender, the default objects are quite large. So in object mode, I will scale the object down and I'll type in 0.1 and then hit enter so it is a better size and I can press control A and we're just going to apply the object scale so this is now the object's new default scale. So I now want to duplicate this object and make four different chain links and each one is going to have a different rotation. So I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it. Let's bring this over on the Y axis. Then I'll hit the tab key to go into edit mode. And it's important that you rotate this over in edit mode. So I'm going to hit R to rotate. Let's rotate it on the X axis. I'll type in 90 and then enter. And I can go back to object mode. So this is still the object's default rotation because we rotated the mesh over in edit mode. So then back in object mode, we're going to select this object. We'll duplicate it and bring it over here. And then we'll go into edit mode and in edit mode we want to rotate this over on the x-axis and i'll rotate it almost over by 90 degrees but not quite so just something like that i can go back to object mode and then in object mode we're going to duplicate this again and then we'll go back into edit mode and then this one i'm going to rotate back up to almost 90 degrees but we'll actually just rotate it a little bit over just like that and i'll go back to object mode so now you can see this one is horizontal then this one is vertical then this one is mostly horizontal and then this one is mostly vertical so that'll give us a little bit of variation to the rotation of the chain so i now want to add the object that we're going to be adding the chains onto so i'll press shift a Let's go to curve and I can add the BZA curve. So you can now go into edit mode and you can select the curve handles and you can extrude the curve handles out and rotate them and scale them just to model where you want the chains to actually be. So I'll just do something simple like that, kind of bring this over. All right, so we can now select this object here and we're gonna go to the geometry nodes workspace or you can click here and you can drag out to split the window and you can click on the editor type and you can change it to the geometry nodes. However, I'm just gonna close this, I'm just gonna click here here to go to the geometry nodes workspace that I've created. All right, so let's click on new to add new geometry nodes. And you can see it's added the geometry nodes right here as a modifier. And I can rename this just to chains or chain links. And then one more thing I want to do real quick with these chains, I want to click and drag to select all of these chains, and I want to move them into their own collection. So with them all selected, you can press the M key, and we're going to click here on a new collection, and we can just call this chains. And if you want to create many different types of chains, then you could call it like chains one, and then you could make more collections with more chains. I will just call this chains click on OK. So now right here on the outliner, you can see we have this collection which has the curve and then this chains just has the torus objects. So that is what I want. All right, so we can now click back here to select the curve again and we'll create the geometry node setup. So the first thing that I want to do is add the instance on points nodes so that we can instance the chains on the curve. So I'll press shift A and you can just start to search for instance and we're going to search for the instance on points and we'll just drop this right in here. Now you can see the curve disappeared, but that is okay. So I now want to instance these chain objects on the curve. So I'll press shift A and you can start to search for collection and we're going to add the collection info node because we want to give the geometry nodes the data of the chains collection. So now we can just click right here and we want to select the chains collection. So that is the data of the chains. And we can take the collection info and we'll put the instance into the instance. So now you can see that all of the chain objects are going to be instanced on the curve. However, if you go into edit mode, you can see they are only going to be instanced on the handles. And also there is another problem and that is that it's instancing all of them instead of just randomly choosing different ones. So to fix that, we're going to choose the separate children, the reset children, 
and also the pick instance. So by checking those three values, now you can see it'll just choose a random one. And this is actually exactly what we want because you can see this one is horizontal and then we have a vertical one and a horizontal one and a vertical one. Now, the other problem is that it's still just on the handles and we want it to be going along the curve. So to fix that, I'll press Shift A and we're gonna search for the resample curve. So let's add the resample curve here after the group input. So if we turn this count up, it's gonna add more and more of those chains so we can turn this up to something like that and now if you go into edit mode you can see that it is instancing it many times along the curve however there's a few problems with this one problem is that if i make this bigger you can see now there's going to be more space and if i make it smaller then they're going to be squished together and then the other problem is that they're not rotating with the curve they are just straight so we're going to fix that so first let's fix the problem where if i make this bigger you can see there's too much space in between them so to fix that we want to take the count here and we want to turn it to length instead this way if i make this bigger or smaller it's going to add or remove chains if i change the size so now we can just change this length down or actually we want to turn the length up we just want to make it the correct size and for now you can just make the curve handle straight and that way you can just change the size and i just want to make the size so that there's a tiny little bit of space or there's basically not any space at all right there and you can hold down the shift key as you drag this to make your movements more sensitive so i'm going to go with a 0.375 but you can just change this to the size of your chain and also if you want to you could go into edit mode and change the size of those chains but for me that is a good size so there's just a tiny little bit of space um, but now the chains look like they are connecting so now there's another problem and you can see if this rotates the chains are not rotating with the rotation of the curve so to fix this we need to add some sort of node which is going to tell the geometry nodes to follow the rotation of the curve so i'll press shift a and we're going to search for the align euler to vector let's drop this down here and the align euler to vector can go into the rotation because this rotation is going to control the rotation of the collection you can see if i drag the x or the y and the z it is just manually rotating it but instead i want to put the align euler to vector into the rotation so this didn't really fix it you can see i can change the x y and z but that's not really doing anything you can see now if i rotate this you can see it's still just kind of doing the same thing so to actually give it the curve data i want to press shift a and I want to go to the search and I'm going to search for the curve tangent node. So this will actually give it the data of the rotation of the curve. So we're going to put the tangent here into the vector of the align Euler to vector. And now you can see that is fixed. Now what's great about this align Euler to vector node is that if the offset is wrong, you can choose X, Y, or Z. So for me, X works fine. It is moving over on the X axis and that's how we modeled the chains. But if that is the wrong rotation, you can change the X, Y, and Z just to change that. Now I also want to be able to control the random rotation just in case I want a little bit of random rotation. The rotation is pretty good because we made this horizontal and then vertical and horizontal and vertical so the chains are connecting correctly but maybe we just want to add a little bit of random rotation. So to do that I'll press shift A and we're going to search for the random value node. We can put the random value here and we can put the value into the rotation to give it random rotation. So now there's a minimum rotation and a maximum rotation and I'm just going to turn the maximum rotation to a 0.1 so it is pretty subtle. But if you want to make it bigger, you can turn it way up. But if you turn it way up, you can see that sometimes the chains are going to go through each other. And that's because of how I've modeled this. So this is going to work for making the chains rotate back and forth. So I just like to turn the random rotation, the random value max to a very small number like 0.1. And that just gives it slight rotation randomness. And then there's also this seed value. So you can change the seed if you want to change that. And then right over here on the instance on points, we also have the scale. So you can drag the scale around to change the size of that, but we're going to be adding customizable values for that. And then one more thing that you can do is you can set the material for the chains. So you can press shift A and you can search for the set material node and we'll put the set material after the instance on points. So it's telling it that all the geometry before the set material is going to be whatever material you choose. So I've just added this simple procedural metal material that I've created. So now if I just select the chain, I can click here and I can just select the silver. So you can create a procedural material. You can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist or just create some sort of simple material. And then on the drop down, you'll be able to choose all of the materials which are in the Blender file. So you can see there's the material and I'm in the material preview. If I were to go up into rendered mode, it's gray. That's because I need to add like some HDRI lighting and add some more lights. But just for this preview, I'm just going to use the material preview. So there we go. We have a nice simple material for the chains. All right. So this is pretty useful, but to make it even more useful, we're going to be creating custom values. 
So if we plug any values up to the group input, it's going to show up right over here on the modifiers here on the geometry nodes. So I first want to be able to change the chain scale. So let's take the scale here from the instance on points and we'll put that to the socket there, the extra socket. So now we can change it here, but I just want to use one value instead. So if I press the N key to open the side panel, let's go here to the scale and we want to click on vector and we want to change it to float instead. And float will just make one single value. So now here on the default value, we want to turn this to one and then you still can't see the chains that's because we need to turn the scale to one and then also i don't really want to use this button here that is the input attribute toggle i don't really want to use that for this value so what i'm going to do is click here on single value just to get rid of it now i also want to be able to control the chain type so right here you can see here's the collection info so you can make many different chains and add them to different collections and then you can choose them down here so i'm just going to click here and drag this here into the extra socket and then if i click here to rename it i'm just going to rename it to chain type so now right over here you can see there's the chain type and you can choose between any collections of chains that you've made. Then I want to be able to control the chain material. So if you click here on the set material, let's drag the silver material over here to stick it in there. And then I can just rename this and I can just rename it to chain material. And then I want to be able to control the distance. So we have this length right here and this length value will control the distance. So we'll put that into the extra socket and then I can rename this to chain distance. And then I want to be able to control the random rotation and the seed. So let's take this max value from the random rotation, put that in there, and I can just rename this to random rotation. And then let's take the seed, we'll put that in there to the extra socket, and I can just rename this to rotation seed. And then also on some of these values here, so the rotation seed and the chain distance and random rotation, I'm also going to click on the single value just to hide that because I don't really want that extra buttons there, just to make it look a bit nicer and more clean and neat. All right, so let's just go back here to the layout and I'll go down into the material preview just to see that and let's go here to the modifiers. All right, so we now have the scale of the chains. You can also change the chain type here and you can choose the material here and then we have the chain distance and we also have this cool random rotation and then the seed value. And then of course you can go into edit mode of the curve. You can select the curve handles. You can hit E to extrude, R to rotate. S to scale and you can move the chains around so you can model some cool chains in your scene. Maybe you're making some medieval dungeon scene. You could like have some chains hanging from some rafters or something. Uh, the creativity is all up to you. So if you wanted the chains to look really old and rusty, you could of course add some sort of procedural rust material. So thank you for watching the tutorial and I hope you found it helpful. And if you'd like to help support the channel to help me keep on creating these free tutorials, a great way to do that is by purchasing the product and you can find the links to that in the description. And some other great ways to help support the channel is by checking out the YouTube memberships by clicking down there on that join button next to the subscribe button. And by joining the YouTube memberships, you'll be helping to support the channel monthly and you'll get some cool perks here on YouTube. And if you enjoyed the video and you'd like to send me a little tip, you can also use the super thanks feature here on YouTube. And another great way to support the channel monthly is by checking out my Patreon page. And on my Patreon page, you can get 3D models and assets, tutorial files, artwork project files, procedural materials. You can also get the project files for this product here and much more Blender content on my Patreon page. But this will wrap it up for the video, so I hope you enjoyed this and thank you for watching.